So a number of times over the past year, uh, I know you've been asked to give something of your story. Uh, you're a U of I grad, right, class of 2000. Um, so a lot of people ask, you know, how did you get from that point to here? You're wearing a Roman collar now, so there must be a story. Okay. Well, that's a really good question. Uh, where was my faith? How devout was I in college? Whatever the opposite extreme of being a devout Christian, that's what I was, right? So, <laughs> so I was really off track in my faith. And I think my journey began right out of high school when I entered junior college at the College of DuPage. It was a very good experience there. I was studying criminal justice because I wanted to go into law enforcement. I was working almost full-time at the police department, West Chicago Police Department. And then one morning I woke up and I had this realization that was really essential. It was pivotal in my life. <clears throat> It's the question that is lingering in every human's, human's uh, heart, which is, what is the meaning of my life? I knew that I'd go into the, a profession that you risk your life you know, for justice, but why? Why even do it? And so I was really struck by that question, so much so that I immediately switched my major from criminal justice to philosophy. And philosophy is the study of truth through the light of human reason and dedicated many hours to, to study. I also studied different religions and I, I went to Jain temples, Baha'i temple, I went to a Hindu temple, I went to a Buddhist temple, I went to all sorts of places just searching for truth. Eventually I transferred from College of DuPage to the University of Illinois. I lived at Allen Hall and I studied and I studied and I studied and uh, I wasn't getting any closer. I saw bits and pieces of truth in different religions and philosophies which were beautiful but I wasn't getting the whole picture. And uh, I came to another realization, which was that I'm not the sharpest crayon in the box. <laughs> that I needed help. I, I wasn't finding truth on my own abilities, through my own abilities. And so I did something that was really desperate. So desperate uh, that is unthinkable for most philosophers, which was I said a prayer. And uh, the prayer was just, you know, 10 seconds long. I remember it. I was on my bunk at Allen Hall. And I said, God, if you exist and if you love me, show me your truth and I'll follow you without any compromises, wherever you lead me. If, but you have to show me that you love me and that you exist and I'll do it. Well, the Lord answered that prayer. It was a sincere prayer of the heart. And the next day, I met this Catholic who was preparing a trip to Mexico through the Newman Center, which I didn't know what the Newman Center was. It'd be, I think, 18 college students, a Catholic priest. We'd go down to Mexico to care for 130 orphans. And our job was simply to paint the orphanage, but the the real reason we were there was to give them attention because there's only two nuns who cared for them. So the group went down and for the first time in my life I was experiencing people my own age who prayed, talked about the saints, the Holy Father, prayed hymns to, uh, sang hymns to Mary and went to Mass, prayed the Rosary, etc, etc, etc. And I really uh, didn't feel uh, a part of the group. I, it was very foreign to me. But I realized that if God was going to talk to me after I said that 10 second prayer that I probably had to talk to him more because that's how relationships work. And I decided to join them to pray the rosary with them. And it was a really powerful experience. We were in this church. It was, a, it was roughly hewn stones, this really old Mexican church. And in the church they had this beautiful crucifix. It had a larger than life corpus with real human hair, I think, or horse hair. I don't know what kind of hair they use those. Crucifixes are crazy, but and then all this blood and gore it looks so realistic. It was very really easy to meditate on the passion of Christ. <clears throat> and I prayed. I only knew the Our Father and Hail Mary. But I knew that this form of prayer was a way to, to come closer to God. And as I prayed, something happened. I started to feel and experience a burning uh, in my heart and a sense of peace. And with that burning came a sense of, uh, of God's presence with me. And with that also came joy. And the more I prayed, the more I had all this experience. By the end of the rosary, I was thoroughly convinced that the Lord did love me, He did exist, and now it was time to follow His ways. Yeah, as a priest working in campus ministry, I know you get questions all the time from students, so I'm curious if there's one question or, or one question underneath people's questions, like sort of a fundamental one that, that you get a lot of. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I do think there is a central question that students bring to priests. Uh, in fact, it's a central question that I, I have to face every day myself. 
And uh, there's different ways to express this question. But as we follow Christ, this is how I express it. I wonder every day if Jesus Christ is a jerk or not. That's my main concern. If the things that he proposes are, are just pie in the sky, you know, that it's really going to come true, the things that he offers me. And he promises 100-fold. So the question that, that stems off of whether he's a jerk or not is whether I can verify that he's not, you know, and I, I want to know, I want to know that I'm on the right path. And so do all the students. They want to know his blessings. They want to know his presence. They want to know his beauty, his grandeur. And so they're trying to find the tools to, to approach him in a way to experience that. So I think that's the key, the key question is, how can we know that we're on the right path and that Jesus is the one who will give us really the satisfaction of the infinite needs and desires of our heart? So how? So how? How do we do that? <clears throat> well, part of it is being very honest with our own experience to observing how life operates in our own heart. I would say, I, I tell people often that if you see somebody who has this new humanity, what I mean by that is uh, who, who approaches the world in a fresh and beautiful way, who sees things in a clear, clear way of what's taking place around them, instead of just focusing on all the dreary things, but they see the beauty as well, and they're filled with life. Uh, my suggestion for, the, for students is just follow that person because they're on the right track. Uh, I think that's I think that's key, but also honestly looking into what one's heart desires. What is it that my heart desires? And when I look in my own heart, I know that I desire peace, beauty, justice, truth, communion. And so I, I look at my Christian faith and say, okay, now how does Jesus promise these things? And and when I follow Him, do I experience the beginning or taste new beauty, and justice, and freedom? and peace and all these things. Oh, yeah. How do you view the overall mission of this Newman Center or of Newman ministry in general? Well, certainly, our mission is not simply to teach certain things so that people can mindlessly follow us. Our job is not to make people into robots or indoctrinate them through a bunch of pious statements or, or sayings from the saints or something, but rather to engage them at a very basic human level to encourage them and inspire them to keep searching, but then provide them with the tools to search, to take their concerns, their difficulties, and their problems seriously, and to be honest about them, and not to uh, just push them aside and give some pious talk in its place. So I want to, to, to offer the students uh, a companionship, a friendship, that they know that they're not the only ones who are searching, even those who are devoutly practicing their faith. Even a Catholic priest who gives his whole life over to the church is still in a search and still has to do the work of looking deep into these questions and going deeper into the ultimate meaning of life. And that's what I want to encourage in the students. Sure, I hope they end up with Jesus, obviously, because that's where I found these answers to be to lie. But they may not be there yet. And so we just have to start uh, with the very basic human things that uh, we all confront.